is going on guys this is assassin 14 and I have the good quality headphones once again so this should sound way better than the last part of this walkthrough all right let's let's get going um I don't know today it's pr this is probably gonna be more of a like I guess playthrough part because I'm gonna be talking about like some random stuff I don't know because basically in this part of the walkthrough this is all you know, we don't get to the good parts till I beat all the trainers here in this area. So basically, this is just some trainer battles that you guys don't necessarily need to see. And if you guys don't really want to see them, you guys can skip on to later parts of the walkthrough. And if you just want to hear me talk, then by all means, you know, stay. And if you don't, then, you know, just go ahead and skip on because important parts will be coming up. And by important, you guys will see what I mean. But if you probably already know, you know, then you know. So... I was just, I just finished watching some nice anime, you know, more specifically the uh, Naruto Shippuden anime, which is really awesome. Uh, it's really, really, how do I put this? It leaves you in suspense just because, like, you don't know what's going to happen next, and it's very, very long at that. The manga is actually far ahead from the anime. If I had money, I would definitely go out and buy all the manga and, like, read ahead because I'm really interested at this point of what's going to go on next, like, what's going on next in the storyline. But I don't, so I have to wait until all the anime comes out. Which is pretty sad because it's probably going to take a long time before that does. But, um, yeah, this is probably kind of weird that I'm talking about Naruto and I'm playing Pokemon. But, um... <laughs> So yeah, I just, I just wanted to say that because Naruto is such a great anime. If you guys don't know what it is, I suggest you guys check it out. It's Naruto Shippuden. But I mean, of course, who doesn't know about that? I basically grew up reading Naruto when I was a kid. The Shonen Jump magazines and all that other good stuff. You know, but do totally, if you guys don't know what it is, then you guys should definitely go check it out. It's definitely the best manga I have read. I mean, well, the best anime I have seen apart from Dragon Ball Z. It's probably like at the same level as Dragon Ball Z. Except for the fact that Dragon Ball Z was probably not as suspenseful as this, or as Naruto, but still, it's pretty damn good. So, um, yeah. Enough about that, let me keep talking about the walkthrough and, um, what's going on now. So basically, we're at Root. I don't remember what the fuck is this, this Root is called, I, I seriously don't. So, um, I think it's Route 20. 7 or 6, 207 if I'm not mistaken, if probably 206, I don't remember, but it's one of those two, and so here it's just like, you know, trainers, what else can I say? Half of this walkthrough, more like three-fourths of this walkthrough is going to be trainers, random trainers that I'm going to be battling, because that's really pretty much what Pokemon is based off of, if you guys have not realized that by now, you basically battle trainers get your Pokemon stronger, catch more Pokemon, go battle the elite, or the gym leaders, then go battle the elite four members. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So here this guy's about to send out his Luxio, and I'm just like, fuck, Bloodsucker's not going to be able to take that. I'm going to send in Unicorn right away, because I know that if I keep fucking what's-his-face Bloodsucker in there, his Luxio will take me out. I go straight for the Flame Wheel, hoping that it will be one-hit KO, but I really doubt it, and it's not... He goes ahead for the charge and basically he just let me kick his ass because I'm probably going to go for another flame wheel. Which is probably going to take it out as soon as he rises his special defense which is really not going to help him at all. Because it's flame wheels of physical attack so. Yes of course I end up kicking his Luxio's ass which is good for me and that is you know 225 experience points for both my Chompette, Gibble and Unicorn here. So I switch out because I don't even I didn't even see what Pokemon he's gonna send out. I, I send out Kick Dick's ass because oh yeah he sends out a Gilgar, which is flying and a ground type. I used to think it was a poison and a ground type back when I first realized that it was a Pokemon when I first played Silver, which is my first second gen game. So I go straight for the Bubble Beam just because obviously ground is weak to water. And so. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of that one, and it's two and I in 243 experience points, which is not bad, you know. I wish it could give me more, like maybe 500. That would help me raise my Pokemon faster. 
but it's whatever. I don't know what the hell I'm doing right here. I guess I'm just checking to see if these rocks have, like, items, hidden items, you know? Because, you know, hidden items are just everywhere. And, yeah, so here I'm going to battle this, 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 what is she called? Battle Girl Helen. She sends out her Machop, but, I mean, of course, everybody should already know how the story is going to end out, because I first send out Bloodsucker, and I go straight for the wing attack. It should be a one-hit KO, and it, I think it is, yes. By the way, guys. Oh, never mind. Hold on. That's actually till the end, of, or till the like a little bit later on in this part of the walkthrough. Um, so I don't want to spoil it. Um, but here she sends out a Metatite, and I'm gonna go ahead and just fuck, you know, rape it with a fucking wing attack, and that takes that shit out because you know I'm a fucking boss. Super effective, and it goes. It's just 204 experience points, which is shit. I really don't like the fact that I'm getting low experience points at you know, but I mean, then again, what can I expect? I mean, I'm using an experience share, which I shouldn't ex expect a lot of. And here, all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but it like froze. I don't know if it froze or j I was just doing something that caused the um, emulator to like stop for a minute. But something happened. But or and I don't know. I don't know exactly what. But fortunately, it stopped. And now here, I'm gonna gonna battle the mountain guy with a big belly in his uh, little. Um, hat. What, well, I don't remember what those hats are called, but um, he sends out his Geo dude. What can I say? I mean, these guys are literally asking to get raped up the butthole because they are sending Pokemon that are no match for any of my Pokemon. Mobile Beam, he's down, and that's the end of that. Oh, and fortunately, Chompette, my Gibble, goes up a level, so she's going up there. She's getting stronger. He sends out another Geo dude. Oh, it's it's increased by two levels, and oh yeah, like that's really gonna do anything. It's not. I go for a bubble, and that should end it right there. Really should. Yeah, and then it's done. It fainted. Uh, he gains 148 experience points, and he's about to send it Jill dude again, which I'm like at this point you should just pretty much forfeit, but he doesn't, and this Jill dude is two levels lower, which you know is kind of pointless. If you ask me but um I go for the bubble beam and there's no way I could possibly lose to these geo dudes so I knock him out and then he's about to send out his onyx and the onyx is alright it'd be troublesome if you had Pokemon that were not super effective but bubble beam does a trick so that ends up killing that onyx and yep 219 experience points was just all right, but I mean, once again, experience share doing its little. I'm gonna be an asshole to you, not giving you full experience points. I'm not. I don't remember if in Pokemon Black, like experience share gives you the even like, you know, full experience points for both Pokemon. I think it doesn't. I don't know, but that'd be a good thing to do, you know, if you're training weak Pokemon or anything. You know, that'd be a really good like for future games. You know, have an experience share that does give you experience points, you know, complete experience points, but it gives them to both Pokemon, you know, kind of like if both Pokemon were battling without the experience share, if that makes any sense, that'd be really cool. I mean, just for future games, I'd, I'd hope, but I, I mean, I doubt I see, I'll see it, but just hopefully it will happen. So then I battle this next rock guy who sends out his Geodude, and I'm just like, have you not learned from the past, guys? I just like anally raped that you're not going to stand a chance if you send out some de damn Geodudes. Um, so Chompette gets games and experience points, he's about to send out his Nose Pass, and I'm just like, well, it's the same story, Nose Pass is a rock type, and it is weak to water, so I'm gonna go ahead for a Bubble Beam, and, you know, what can I say? Nose Pass gets knocked out in one hit. I think Nose Pass's evolution is probably one of the lamest things I've seen, ever. It's like a big nose floating, that's all it is, it's like a floating nose, like, what the fuck? Nintendo. Good job on being creative on your damn Pokemon. A floating nose really couldn't get any lamer than that. Alright, so here guys, if you go into next is obviously you go into this cave, but guess who comes up? The ex-girlfriend Dawn shows up. I mean, yeah, Dawn, that's her name is shit. I forgot her name for a second. And she wants you to choose left hand. I don't remember what's on the left hand, but on the right hand is the versus seeker. If you really want a versus seeker, go ahead and grab it. I don't remember what's on the left hand. I'm pretty sure it's something else that could be possibly important or maybe she gives you both things she's just like you know what fuck it here you can have both these shits you know hopefully you'll make out with me or make up with me later 
But I mean, whatever. She gives you the dousing machine, also. And so, yeah, that's pretty much useful. Also, I don't remember if it's in this episode or in the next episode, or not episode, but fucking part of the walkthrough that I get the, what's it called? The fucking shell bell, or no, no, no smooth shell, which will help my um, fucking gold bat uh, tr evolve into a crow bat faster. Oh, and look what the fuck the fucking cave dragged in, fucking blue haired man. Cyrus. So this guy's just ranting about, like, nonsense, and you're just like, what the fuck? And then you're like, why? It's kind of sketchy how fucking... It, it didn't take fucking Dick to come in and, and, like, come, you know, bring you into the scene to fucking do whatever the fuck you normally do. And here, uh, here's the funny part, guys. I actually thought I was a badass. I'm like, holy shit, look what I found. If I just smash through all these rocks, I don't need to take the long way to fucking, you know get through this damn cave so here I'm just like oh hell yeah I found a shortcut and I'm like I can tell the, like I can tell the viewers that you can easily get through this place by smashing through these rocks so you know I think I, right now I'm like completely thinking I'm a badass I'm like they don't need to go the long way because I totally forgot exactly how long this place was and I'm like wait you know what I'm just gonna go check what the long way actually was I was planning to stop it right here but I accidentally forgot and then this is what I found out that there is no fucking long way. That I was like fucking taking even more time destroying all those fucking rocks that I could have just ran over here and I'm just like okay fuck. I just completely fucked up and I took a longer way by smashing all those damn rocks. So I'm just like fuck. But anyway you guys don't do the same thing that I did. I recommend that you go the short way which is just running through the path where Creeper Cyrus came through. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't rock smash all the rocks thinking you're a badass like me. So here we will battle this guy. Hiker Jonathan, you know, big body Jonathan. He sends out his onyx. And what can I say? I mean, it's the, the story doesn't change for any onyx. I really believe they should figure this out by now. But, you know, whatever. I'll just go straight for the fucking... Uh, bubble beam on dildo onyx and he gets knocked out and that's the end of that battle pretty much I don't even know like it's the end of him boo hoot you know. hopefully you guys what I'm trying to get for this is like showing you the battles is hopefully you guys like I know I repeat this many times but this is just so you guys understand are not like oh this is boring get on like you know show us like sh sh skip the fucking battles I'm doing the battles just so you guys know what's coming up you know, so you guys know what to expect. Um, you know, what Pokemon to catch up with. Or, not to catch up with, what the fuck, I'm totally doze, or zoning off. But what Pokemon to send out when you're gonna battle this trainer. You know, that's really helpful. Like, if I was a person who was, like, watching a walkthrough. Because, obviously, when I was younger, I did. Like, a couple years ago, I would always watch on um, freaking LDNs. Or LNDs. Shit, LNDs, walkthroughs, light, dark, neutral. Unfortunately, that guy's like gone now forever, which breaks my heart because he's no longer doing any walkthroughs. Um, like he was my favorite commentator and walkthrough person, but Light Dark Neutral is now unfortunately gone, and like I'm shedding tears. Um, but when I used to watch him, like I would always see that sometimes he would skip battles, and I would be like, "Well, what the hell?" And then I send it a wrong Pokemon, and back then I wasn't so experienced, so my Pokemon would fucking die, and I was like, "Fuck, fuck, fuck!" So. You know, I'm just learning from those past commentators that maybe it'd be helpful that I show you guys the battle. And instead of, you know, just leaving you guys with like, what the fuck? Now I am going to get my ass handed to me. But, you know, most likely that won't happen. But this is just still so you guys get informed that, you know, this is what's going to happen next. This is what you should be aware of. This is what this guy's going to send out. So yeah, here, this guy sends out a nose pass, which once again is like a fucking rock looking bird. That really doesn't do shit except for stand straight tall and that's it so yeah kick his ass and then we run over here and let's just rock smash through these through these rocks right quick and what the fuck it's gonna turn night time I don't know what I was doing but I think I had to wait and start recording again but um yeah we got this other over here 
And I'm just gonna like, I don't know, I guess I was just like, okay, did I miss something? Am I missing anything? No, I'm not. So I figured that this lady over here would be like some type of weed, you know, high lady. Those girl, those women that are like, you know, with their aromas and flowers, trying to pretend that it's just flowers when it in fact is marijuana. Like they're smoking it. So here, I'm, here's this like high um, weed lady. He's gonna send out her Rosalia. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and send out Unicorn just because obviously fire beats grass. Duh, even noobs know that. So I go straight for the flame wheel, which should do like enough damage to like completely kill it. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> and so he's, she's gonna send out a Combi, which in my opinion is pretty much a ridiculously looking stupid Pokemon. That looks really, really dumb. Also, I also find it kind of dumb how only the women can evolve into Vespiquen or Vespiquen or whatever her name is. But again, I, then again, it kind of makes sense because like queen bees are female, hence the name queen bees. But I mean, I don't know. They could have at least made. Combi, the the male version, evolve into like some type of I don't know, fucking wasp or some shit. I don't know. You know, it would have been better. Like I would have totally caught one and trained it if that was the case. But you know, because I I personally don't like Vespiquen just because it's a fucking drag to train it. So here's this guy. Um, he's a painter, I assume. And for the most part, I know that painters send out smeargles. This guy starts out with a Mr. Mime, and I'm just like, Bloodsucker, yes, Bloodsucker, yes. So here, I think I accidentally go for the wing attack, and then I'm like, fuck me. I had bite. I could have easily used that. But fortunately, I forgot to crit, and that knocks out the Mime Jr. And that's the end of Mime Jr. Chompette gets some experience, blah, blah, blah. So he doesn't have a Smeargle like I predicted. He has a Bonsly. And then here, I don't know why I thought Bonsly was a rock type. I think that the little green, like, balls on its head threw me off. So I'm just like, fuck. I accidentally attacked it. With a wing attack. And then my fucking bloodsucker got anally raped with a rock throw that was also a critical hit. So I try to go for a bite and I'm just like, fuck, this is not gonna knock it out. So bite didn't do anything. He goes for the next rock throw and what the fuck? Bloodsucker gets knocked out by a damn little Bonsley. So I'm just like, fuck me. It was all my mistake because I thought that Bonsley was a grass type for like a whole minute. So I send Kick Dick's ass, and I'm just gonna end this shit because I'm I, at this point I was I think I was pretty pissed. I was like, "Fuck this bitch!" Like knocked out my fucking what's his face, uh, fucking uh, Gold Bat, and yeah, now he won't get any experience at all. So I, so this is like we're getting to the end of this part of the walkthrough, guys. Next time we will go into this damn uh, Hearthstone City battling gym leaders. But until next time, this has been Assassin14 signing out.